All right, greetings. All right, so what do I got today? I've got, uh, I posted the other day, this the, the Bullet Whiskey I, I was able to find. I have a really nice liquor shop here. They've got like everything. Bullet Whiskey, Frontier Bourbon Whiskey from Kentucky. Straight bourbon whiskey. And, uh, hey, Kenichiwa. And I've got it in, I happen to have it in my bullet glass. I got that AliExpress. It was a couple bucks shipped. You know how that works. Alec Bradley or Alec Baldwin? Alec, Alec Baldwin. No, that's a Baldwin. Alec Bradley cigar. These are a really nice value. A couple few bucks. Nice plumage. Very nice. This is awesome. Post up below if you can some uh, some good bourbons. Like I'm, I'm becoming a bourbon fan recently, and. Uh, some people gave me some suggestions like one was like a buffalo something or bison i don't know something buffalo bison tatanka something like that um yeah post that below if, if, if you know a good one um so today uh i had fun thinking about this today so what am i going to call it the silence gunfight maybe something like that so um, so culturally culturally certainly there's there's a lot more um, comfort with silence here and I talked about that in the meeting uh, video um, there's a lot of silence in meetings here really uncomfortable and as a New Yorker you know silence I want to fill that up right it's very uncomfortable for me, but I, I've become more comfortable with that in my years here. I think I've been here like 25 years or something. Um, so, but going back to, to America, so back to California, when I lived in California, talked about that a little bit before. I was selling Lexus. Um, I did all kinds of stuff, and there are other videos about this in the future when I lived in California, right? Because as I said, the job market was terrible. I just went out there on my motorcycle on a whim, sold everything, just moved out there, relocated, and uh, landed in San Diego. And the first job that I had was at a motorcycle shop that I had pre-researched, a fun bike center in San Diego. Wow, this thing's got wonderful smoke. Um, yeah, I mean, they sold what? Honda, Kawasaki, Yamaha, BMW, uh, and used everything, right? So, classic cast of characters selling there. Uh, had a lot of fun, learned a lot. Took some lumps as well. Um, very brutal sales market. And the guy next to me, um, he was a real tweaker, but a nice guy. And he was a, a very good down and dirty salesperson. Down and dirty. I mean, you know, you learn some dirty tricks from him that you could, you know, take on into life and whatnot. But he had this this thing that he said to me once, and it made a lot of sense. And, you know, I was thinking about at that time how I often had the habit of answering for a customer, or almost sometimes even talking away the sale, like by judging by what they're saying. And I'm like, oh yeah, that's okay because the sale. And he had this this theory, you know, you're, you're in a hard bargain with someone, you know, you, you're telling them what it is, here, here's the offer, and then you shut the bleep up and look him in the eyes, or her in the eyes. And the next person to speak loses. <laughs> right, because the weak salesman uh, would be explaining away, oh, that's a, well, if you don't like that, I could throw in this, or I could raise it that, or something. And, you know, his theory, you know, you make the offer, you put it on the table, and you shut up. And you don't fill the silence. You let them squirm and then hopefully capitulate. I don't know. Um, the result of those sessions wasn't as important as, as what I, you know, kind of took away with that. Um, because uh, later in life, it, it turned out to be interesting. So, um, in the classroom... Nowadays, I, I face this uh, as well. So as a teacher, I've become much more comfortable with silence. How are you with silence? You comfortable with that? 
when is it useful for you? I wonder, you know. Um, so in, in my case, in the classroom, uh, it's kind of funny. So there, there are some students who's probably their, um, uh, their strategy for their academic career has been whenever a teacher calls on them, they'll just give like the, the deer in the headlights look, right? Just like, you know, just sit there. And, and they're playing the silence gunfight, I'll call it, right? Or the silence game of chicken. You know what? Luna's eating a, a painted stick. I got to go get this. Hold on. Hey, get a lick of that. You get into the danger in there. Man. Yeah. She was about to eat the painted part. She's working her way up. All right. It's not for you, pup pup. Um, so, you know, you call on a student and they're, they're, they're just like, and, and they won't say anything. And in my earlier days of teaching, I used to be the one to speak first. Answer for that student. Let him or her off the hook somehow by maybe restating the question or uh, giving suggested answers or something like that. And now I am cold steel Clint Eastwood in a gunfight OK Corral. I'm just like... Yeah, I, it's not quite like that. I mean, I'm putting on my my slightly compassionate Buddha face is what I aim for, you know. So, you know, you know, something slightly, you know, you know inviting, uh, but stoic. And, uh, you know, and then, and then like the gunfight begins, you know, that student is kind of stewing. And then, you know, we're both feeling kind of the heat of the whole classroom there. And they're, you know, they're thinking, well, you know, maybe Sensei's going to quit first. It's a game of chicken, right? Maybe Sensei's going to quit first. And I'm like, dude, there have been hundreds before you. There could be hundreds after you. I can sit here all day. Silent. And uh, more times than not, the student will crack and say an answer, right? Spit it out, you know, something. something. And then, you know, and they, they kind of learn from that day that, uh, you know, if I go catatonic, it's not going to get me out of this situation. I'm going to have to give an answer, right? Ah, these are wonderful, man. These are really nice. Yeah, so the silence gunfight. Right? So I've, I've learned uh, in my older days to be a lot more comfortable uh, with silence. And, uh, you know, I've gotten away from my New Yorker. I've got to fill, fill the space. You know, what, what is the saying? Don't speak unless you can improve the silence, something like that. You know, I've, I've definitely gained some comfort with that. Let me know down below. Give me some comments. You know, your experiences with silence. How comfortable are you? Is it a New Yorker thing? Because I know I got a lot of New Yorker friends out there. And I feel like... You know, a lot of discomfort with silence from maybe that cultural standpoint. Do you do you think so? Do you agree? Disagree? I don't know. Maybe maybe my Brit friends are more comfortable with silence. I don't know. Anyway, let me know down below. Thanks for uh, thanks for dropping by. Catch you later.